Hello everyone, welcome to the DigiDev channel. In this video, we're going to go through arrays and loops. So let's start with arrays. Arrays are very much like variables. For creating a variable, we say let the name of the variable, which can be a sport, and then we'll say it's equal to a value, for example, football. So the difference between a variable and array is that array can contain multiple values. Um, and to create an array, the difference is just that we put uh, two bracket at the start and the end of the values. And to separate the values, we use comma. So we say the first value, comma, the second value, let's say basketball, and third value, let's say, would be ping pong. And you can have multiple values as much as you want. And let's change the name to sports now. And uh, here, let's console.log the sports to see what it looks like. Okay, let's hit re. Oh, sorry hit refresh and open up console and here you can see we have an array of three value so if I open it here are the values and here is a parameter called length that we have alongside our array and you can see the uh, indexing of our values inside our array is starting from zero so the first value will be zero the second will be one the third will be two and so on. So now if you want to access a particular value, let's say we want to access the second value. What we do is we say console.log and for accessing an, a specific value, we put the index of the value here. We open up two brackets and here we put the index. So the second value will be index one because it's a start from zero, zero, one, two. So the second one is one and uh, we put the index. And if I save and refresh here, you can see basketball will be logged in our console. And let's see the properties of our array as well. We had a property called length. And if I console log this property, you can see it will give us the length of the array. Now for adding a value to the array, uh, what we need to do is to just say sports. And here, for accessing the values, we put the index, for example, the last value here is index two. So if I put the a number added to the last value, for example, three, that doesn't exist. And if I put that equal to another value, let's say test, it will add this value at the end of our array. So if I now say console.log, sports and if refresh you can see the test has been added to the value because the index tree doesn't exist and it will create an index for it and as for that changing changing the value is the same so if we have an already existing value for example ping pong which is index 2 and if we set it to for example boxing we save it and hit refresh. You can see the ping pong has changed to boxing. All right, let me comment all of them, all of them out. And let's go to some more properties of, our, of the sports array. Another property that we have is pop or let's first go for push. We have three properties that we use oftenly, which are push, pop, and shift. These are some properties we use 
a lot. So push is basically another way to add a value to our array. So let's say here I want to add boxing to my array. I save it and if I, oh sorry, I didn't log that. So let's say console.log sports. If we save it and hit refresh, you can see here we have boxing added to our array. So let me copy this. And here we have pop as well. But pop doesn't require a value. What pop will do is opposite of push, it will remove the last value of our array. So if I save it and it refresh, here you can see the boxing has been added to our array, but after the pop has been executed, uh, the boxing, which is the last value of our array, has been removed. And then we have shift, which is just like pop, but instead of removing the last value, it will remove the first value of our array. Let's save it and hit refresh. Here you can see the football has been removed from the array. All right, that's it for arrays. Let's move on to loops now. So the first loop I want to tell you about is the for loop. The for loop is contained, uh, it's created by tree statement. So we have the for loop. Here is the parentheses and here we have tree statement. The first statement is the counter which will track the number of times that the loop is being executed. The second statement is the condition, which we will uh, create a condition to say in what conditions the loop should stop and in what condition the loop should go on. So the third statement is what to do at the end. So each time the condition is not uh, true and it will run a bunch of code, after the code has been executed, it will run a piece of code in here and then check the conditions again. And let's just write it and see how it works so you can understand it better. So we have for loop. The first one is counter, which is simply an, uh, a variable. We can put any name here like J, we say equal to zero. We don't need to uh, write let or const for this variable because inside of for, it already knows that the first statement is the variable. So we close the, con we close the command and the second statement is the condition. We say on J, until J is less than 10, I want you to do something. And uh, before that, let's go to the third statement, which is what to do at the end. So at the end, I want the J to be added one value to it. So we say plus plus. Plus plus is another way to say add one value to the J. So here are all the codes that I want to be executed each time the loop is running. So what I want to do what I want to do is say console.log j. I want to log j. Let's save it and see how it works. Okay, you can see here we have from 0 to 9 logged into our console. Let's review what's happening right now. So we have a loop, which is a for loop. And the first statement, we create a variable, which is 0. In the second statement, we check if the value is less than 10. So basically we have a simple condition. And after that, uh, the for loop when it's executing, the first time it will check the condition, it will run the code. And after it reaches the end of the uh, bracket, it will add one value to the J and then again, check the condition after it added a value to the J, check the condition if it's still less than 10. Run it again, add a value, 
check the condition, run it again, add a value, check the condition, until the J is not less than 10. So until the condition is met, it will run the loop. That's it for the for loop. So we also can have here say sports dot length. So until the J is less than the length of our array, what I want you to do is console.log sports with the index of j. So the first time j is 0, it will console.log football. The second time it will be 1, it will log basketball. And the third time uh, we will, uh, the j will be 2 and it will um, console.log ping pong. Let's save it and see if it works. Okay, here is the result and it logged all of the values stored in our variable. So let's command, let's comment the for variable, and, sorry, for loop, and let's see another loop, which is while loop. So the difference between while and for is that in while loop, we just have the condition. We don't have the counter and we don't have what to do at the end. We should, add, we should create them ourselves. For example, here we can create a variable called counter, counter, okay. I put it on zero and here I will say until counter is less than 10, what I want to do is console.log counter and the part that uh, we say j++ here at the 4, uh, we will add it inside the loop. So I say add, after I execute all the code that I need, now let's add 1 to the counter and the next time that it want to run the codes, it will check the condition again. And if the counter is equal to 10, it will get out of the loop. So let's save it. And if I refresh here, you can see from zero to nine has been logged into our console. All right, everyone, that's it for this video. Make sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. Bye bye.